What's up, traders and investors? Wes back again, and I want to talk about my highest conviction trades of 2022. These are the two stocks that I have the most faith are going to rise in price over the course of this year. I've been talking about them in my videos here on the Best of Us Investors YouTube channel for the last several weeks, and I've been posting my entries in our Discord. Now, as this recent stock market rally has begun to mature, I think more people are warming up to the idea that stocks are going to continue to go up, seeing as how World War III did not actually happen. And now people need to be really looking in earnest at opportunity. Some of the good entries may be behind us back when the whole market and everyone was nervous. That's just the way of things. But that doesn't mean that these moves are over. The two stocks that I have the highest conviction in this year are Amazon and Google. Now, this begins with the companies themselves. If you're watching this on YouTube, then you are already using a Google-owned product. I do not see that changing anytime soon. I do not see Google losing its dominance in this space. Amazon, you know that you buy stuff of Amazon. You know that they as a company are not going to go away. Well, up until a few days ago, we were stuck looking at Amazon and Google with multiple thousands of dollars share prices. That's been the case for several years now. It's not really investable for some retail traders. And so stocks are split to make them more attractive psychologically for smaller accounts and for the average investor maybe starting out to invest in these companies. So you're going to get this year a stock split on Google and Amazon. And I've talked about these at length, especially Google, when these have been announced because there is a nice history of stock splits in tech companies over the last two years for us to look back on for guidance of what may happen. Now, of course, past performance does not guarantee future results, but we can look at history as a guideline to see what could happen in the instances of these two stocks. So that's what this video is going to be about today. And then we're going to look at some past entries on Amazon and Google. I know they're already gone. You needed to be watching my videos. You needed to be reading the Discord to catch them, but I want to review them and explain why I got in when I did. But let's go back in history a little bit. Let's start by looking at Apple. Apple was a stock split back in 2020. So the split was announced on July the 31st. Okay, so we're going to mark that off. Split announced. And what we're going to do is a little exercise and some price analysis to see what the typical moves were. So from the closing price of July 30th to, let's say, the, uh, the closing price of, or the open, basically when you first would have been able to know about it, of the split announcement, there was a move of about 7% on Apple. Pretty big jump. And then as time went on, the split date was August the 31st. Let's measure this right here. So this is the actual split date. August 31st. There was a movement from the first time you and I knew about it was about 25%. So that's a pretty good rally, 25%. Now, of course, this was a bullish market of 2020. We all remember it if we were trading then. But the key here was that there was this rally, this FOMO, fear of missing out rally. People were expecting more people to buy Apple shares because the share price was going to get smaller. And so this fueled the retail sentiment, fueled this rally going into it. Now, after the split, something equally interesting happened. You had this little spike up as people expected, as the narrative that more people would buy Apple shares started to play out, but price fell off. And so you really would have gotten hurt if you got into this FOMA rally too late, if you had 
a shorter term horizon. Now, of course, Apple, as we know, has rallied since then and broken that sp split price, but you would have had to have been patient and you might would have questioned yourself in the months to come. There was a, from the post split high to the low, there was almost a 25% pullback in there. Remember these numbers, just, just keep them in mind. We had a rally of 25% after the split was announced, then we had a pullback of 25% if we missed it, that we could have gotten into it after the event. So keep that in mind. Now, the next one we're going to look at is Tesla. Tesla announced their split on August, there it is. Tesla announced their split on August the 11th after market. And then so the rally from the close of August, mark that off, split announced. The rally immediately from the close of August the 12th to the open was, again, about 7%, about the same as Apple. And then it, of course, proceeded to rally as well up until the date of the split. So the split date was August the 31st. And that movement from the open to the close here, 69%. Of course, Tesla is very volatile, so that's to be expected, but a pretty big split. And then it also, just like Apple, after the split, had a pretty sharp pullback and consolidated. They both behaved roughly the same way. So we had about a 34% pullback there. So a couple of patterns are emerging here. Number one, you're going to get a big pump on the news announcement, then you're going to get this FOMO rally and you're going to see a sell-off at some point from the split once this rally sort of fizzles out. But assuming people still want to own the company, given a little bit of time and patience, well, and a bull market, it still continued to go up. In Now, these two really informed my trading going into 2021 where we had a split announcement with NVIDIA, which is another company I like and I like to own. So the split was announced on May the 20th, and that single-day rally was about 4%, not quite as much, but still a real quick bounce up and a gap on the stock. And then what did it proceed to do? Just like everything before it, it also rallied. And I know I, I talked to a lot of traders that were trying to jump into this after it was already very, very mature. And I tried to caution them against it because something happened a little bit different. NVIDIA actually did a little pullback into the split. But let's just look at the total movement from the, uh, the day that it uh, came out up to this high, it was about a 40% rally. And then, of course, the split date was on July the 21st, and it had its pullback for that. So that's how the market kind of lures people into thinking that everything's going to repeat at the same time. It doesn't always happen that way. So we don't know exactly what's going to happen with Google and Amazon, but if the past is any indication, you're going to see some sort of rally. And if you don't catch it, you should be patient for the pullback that occurs afterwards. Now, let's take a look at Amazon. Amazon announced its split. This was when the day it was announced. It was on March the 10th. From the closing price to there, it had about a 5% move. And then from the point it has been announced, we are now up about 14%. Now, the movements that we had, I've gotten written down right here, on NVIDIA uh, it had a 22% from announcement to split. Tesla had a 69% from announcement to split. And Apple had a movement of 25% from announcement to split. So the split date of 
Amazon is May the 27th. So that puts it May the 27th here. We have a good bit of time between now and the actual split date, and I don't think that the rally has fully completed up to that point. So keep your eye on Amazon. And again, as we discussed at the beginning of the video, this is a company that I want to own anyway, but you're going to get maybe a little bit of an extra boost and a good opportunity in this pre-split rally if it happens. Google, let's look, take a look at Google. Google came, it announced its split on the 2nd of February. I definitely wanted to be patient on this because it popped it up to the all-time high and failed to really break higher. But that movement, let me get my info line here. From the close to here was almost a 10% movement on that. And then now from the date of the announcement to here, it's actually down. So if you jumped into that, you would not be in good shape. Now, having high conviction in these stocks, let me get into them over the last few weeks. I was able to, I first began buying Google when it pulled back to about 2700 and then on the Russian invasion of Ukraine look I'm a market participant just like everyone else I didn't know what was going to happen so I had to think to myself on that crazy crazy day where markets were making new lows for the year what is the one stock that I want to buy and that informed my decision knowing that Google is a company I want to own and that they have a split coming up the one thing that I did, and I'm glad I did, on the 24th of February was buy Google. And it just happened to be at you know, matching with the 24th low. Very good level there. But I knew that going in, that I liked the company, and it had this potential for a pre-split rally. So those are what informed my decision in this case of Google. Amazon. Amazon was one that I talked to, I've used as a lot of examples when talking to Carrie this last week, why I like to look for 50% retracements. Amazon, from the COVID low to the all-time high that it set in July, pulled back to a 50% retracement level. It did that two days before the split was announced, March the 8th. Hit it, rose off of it. And then I was able to find myself a lower time frame entry when it pulled back on March the 14th. And so I was able to get into this rally and potentially more as this split begins to approach. And by the way, the split on Google is, uh, the date is July the 15th. So I realized that this video is coming out late into this rally, but in both cases, if we look at the past, we see that there's still some more potential upside. And if we miss this potential rally after the split, we can look for a significant pullback to try to enter as well. So those are the two, those are the things that the past informs us about splits in tech stocks. Undoubtedly, Google and Amazon are going to be different. And if you miss these opportunities, then this is going to be a plug again to make sure to consistently watch the videos that I make on Best of Us Investors as well as post in real time on the Discord because I am ultimately a trader first and a YouTuber second. I'm putting these on because I want to seek alpha in the market, but I also love to share these techniques because I just love the art of trading and that's why I make these videos. So I hope this helps everyone invest wisely. We'll see you in the next video.